All right, uh, we're back uh, with a breakfast special. It's a Saturday. You don't usually see both of us here on weekends, but we're here uh, because today, today is a special day. Um, and it's of October 1, 2022. October 1 happens to be a day uh, celebrated as Independence Day in Nigeria. Hope you're having a lovely time at home with your family and friends. Mercy, good morning to you. Good morning. It's great to be back. I just love to be here. I'm so happy to be back here this morning with you as we are um, set to thrill our listeners, our viewers rather, uh, this morning. It's a beautiful day. What, what does October 1 mean to you? Uh, well, it means a lot. I mean, it's a time where you would say, as a sovereign nation, we were, uh, we got out from the shackles of colonial uh, masters. But the question has continued whether or not we're really, really free from, uh, you know, colonialism. Are we a sovereign nation? Because it's encompassing. The conversation, you know, would be that whether we're able to take decisions without interference, whether right. we're, you know, economically independent. But we do have guests yes. in the studio. So but, but before, before we go then, we have you. to introduce ourselves. My name is Kofi Bartels. <laughs> and I am Messi Bopo. Yes, indeed. So we, we would start off this morning with an analysis of the president's speech. Um, you heard him scoring himself high uh, right there. Um, not nothing new, but we would like to introduce our guests this morning. Um, we have two wonderful individuals who are here and set to do justice to the topics uh, later on. But please permit me to, in, to introduce our Debayo Oloake. Uh, he is a director, a principal fellow at the Africa Resource Development Center. We also joined this morning uh, by another guest uh, who happens to be Sir Joe Femi Dagunro, he is the founder of Lagos Forum. Gentlemen, it's great to have you on breakfast this morning. You're welcome. And uh, should I say happy 1st October or happy Independence Day? Which do you prefer? Both. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you reasons why I'm asking that question maybe later. Okay, let's start off. Um, the, the, um, the analysis of the president's speech has already started online. Everybody's right. talking about it. But the first thing I can see and I can, I can, I can uh, take from what he said is caught himself high. Um, so, uh, Adibaya Oluwake, let's start with you. Um, what are your thoughts on that? You know, the president said he's, he's scoring himself high. You know, uh, this is his last Independence Day speech as president before he goes back to his farm in Daura. Well, um, there are two dimensions to the, uh, to the assessment. You know, the administration will assess itself, and then the citizenry will also assess the, the administration. Um, the assessment that the administration gives from its own perspective, you know, there will be no dissension there. But the assessment the citizens will give will vary, you know. Um, and I think that um, usually the easiest way to try to um, look at uh, how well the administration has performed would be to look at the agenda the administration itself set, okay? Uh, and I know a lot of people believe that uh, this administration has uh, essentially said it would focus on security, the economy, uh, fighting corruption, um, uh, and then perhaps infrastructure development. Yeah. And I think that um, today, um, easily one would say there has been a lot of effort put into infrastructural development by this administration. Um, there's, a, there's another side to that, which is that, of course, to erect those infrastructure, uh, we have had to borrow. And that, again, will generate quite a, a lot of debate as to, you know, um, whether we needed to, okay, yes, we, we can see infrastructure, but should we have borrowed that much? Uh, and what are the chances of us being able to pay off uh, such uh, huge exposure, you know, in our debt profile, given the fact that we are still largely a mono-culture uh, economy, uh, depending essentially on oil, oil exports. You know. uh, in terms of security, um, at the moment, the situation in the country has become extremely worrisome. Even the administration has admitted that. Uh, and we know that a couple of weeks ago, the president gave what was said to be uh, you know, a, a, a carte blanche, so to speak, to, to the armed forces to go and crush uh, uh, the threats to the nation, which presupposes that previously they didn't really have that carte blanche, you know, to, to go out, but, but now it was given. So, and I think that tells us something, which means even the administration admits that regarding security, there's still a lot to be done. 
Um, and I think uh, I would end you know, by saying that um, I heard the president talking about the empowerment schemes of his administration, uh, end power, money power, uh, and so on. Now, um, these for me, I think, were um, bold initiatives. Uh, there are concomitant effects to trying to get those bold initiatives to, to succeed, which is uh, the database that is at the, ba at, that is at the um, you know, if you like, the foundation of actually trying to execute such uh, empowerment schemes. Uh, people wonder if we have our data correctly, how many people are targeted, what, what is the impact that has been made, and so on and so forth. But maybe what is not in doubt is that these are bold initiatives. All right, then uh, let's pay attention to security. I'd have a uh, buyer coming now because uh, we understand that this administration came really strong with uh, security as one of its mantra in 2015. And so um, scoring the, the scorecard, because it feels like that's what this speech is about. And so the president said that earlier, there's been a launch of an integrated national security and welfare protection infrastructure. Uh, that's a, a deep blue project, which is designed to secure the Nigerian waterways uh, up to the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, he also talked about that over 8,000 Boko Haram terrorists have surrendered. And uh, he said to support the surge approach in fighting banditry that Nigerian armed forces have recruited over 17,000 personnel across all ranks. And he also stated that, you know, the approach to... Uh, the Nigerian Air Force, that's the Nigerian Police Force, I beg your pardon, has also recruited like 10,000 police officers annually over the last six years. And so uh, the list is almost endless. He's also talked about the Air Force. But what do you make of the security situation, juxtaposing the thoughts of the president on this? You, you, yeah, you, Mr. Femi Dagun. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think there was a mix-up there then. <laughs> yes, actually, uh, when you look at it, um, these problem, the security issue, is not today. It's been a while now. It's been there for a while. And um, I, I used to tell people, once you have the problem, at the initial stage, if it is not curtailed, you have to fight it for more than, if, not, if case not taken, it might take a longer time. And it might even be up to 10 to 16 or 20 years, depending on how you have to, uh, I mean, deliver to the Armed forces. The armed forces at the beginning they were complaining that they don't have uh, enough uh, manpower, the wear weathers, the equipment, and now we begin to see new equipments coming in. So at, it seems at the beginning they were not prepared. Not that they were not prepared with what they want to do, but they were not having the right equipment to go into the battle. So now we're beginning to see the changes that is happening because new equipments are coming in and people have been trained to, I mean, to use this equipment and we are seeing the changes all over. So, but it is not going to be a day affair. It's going to take some time. And it's unfortunate that people's lives, we are losing people and we're losing uh, materials, we're losing equipment, we're losing properties. It's just unfortunate. But it might be, it might take a, a bit while for this to happen. But now look at it. When you look at the, 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 the maritime uh, issue or the sea level, uh, you begin to see that the Nigerian Navy, they've done tremendously well in, in between this uh, period of time. Because uh, before now, you see the piracy, that, you know, the issue of piracy, and now it has reduced tremendously. You hardly hear that. Now they are fighting the battle of this uh, petroleum issue, people, you know, bunkering and all that's hoping on. So if we continue to increase the way we are doing it now to motivate them and to ensure that the equipments they need, the right equipments are being procured and are being done, I think that will be okay. Now, when you look at the infrastructure that we're talking about, infrastructure has always been a problem and we are managing these infrastructural problems right now. But it will take some time. It's, it's unfortunate that uh, when the people, the politicians are com campaigning. They have what I always say, this is a campaign audacity. Because they use the campaign audacity to say, that I will do this, I will do that. And at the end of the day, when they get there, they realize that it's not something they can do overnight. And they begin to say, give excuses. And the populace, the people don't want these excuses. I would have loved a kind of scorecard that will say, look, this is what we are doing, this is what we have done, and this is what we still, we are leaving behind, a kind of legacy that we're leaving behind. But what I've heard so far is just still repeat, and I, I'm saying it because people will say, look, what are we hearing that is new? What is new in the whole thing? So the new thing that we want to hear is what the people are still missing. It's missing. For me, I'm not hearing what is new, but from 
being a citizen of Nigeria, what I can see, what I can feel is what I'm talking about. That, listen, a lot has been done, but most still need to be done. And that is the issue. Listen, we spend so much money on railways and making things happen. But now you're beginning to see that Kaduna Abuja cannot even move. When is it going to become something that we can ply the road? These are the things people want to hear. These are the kind of news people want to hear. All right, gentlemen, we will have, you know, opportunity to, to uh, uh, look at the different aspects of the national, national life in light of the president's speech. Now he's spoken along the way, but we have to put the plugs now. Uh, we'll be staying with you uh, at the Bayo Loake, but uh, uh, Mr. Femi Dagon will be back with us subsequently. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for, for this, and uh, we'll be back right after this break, right here uh, on a breakfast special, right here, Independence Day special on Plus TV Africa. Stay with us. <laughs>